Welcome, my gorgeous Scorpios. Um, today, I'm just doing a reading. Just came to me um, to do a Scorpio reading, mainly because uh, my daughter's birthday is coming up. She is Scorpio on the 29th of October. Um, and, you know, she's going through a little bit of a rough time, you know, working hard, but barely, barely able to pay the bills type of energy. And I thought, well, you know, because we're one big soul family, a lot of times when one person's going through something, a lot of us are going through the same thing. So I thought, let's just do a birthday reading for Scorpio. So this is what it's for. So happy birthday if you're here um, as a Scorpio. Happy birthday. Some of you could just be checking out the video. You may be guided to it, which I feel like is a great thing. Um, you know, I just don't want to say it's only for Scorpio because I do read through my spirit guides and I know that our spirit guides connect. So for those who are meant to see the video, you'll be guided to it. And that I just trust. So let's go ahead and get into the reading. So by the way, Scorpio, sun, moon, rising. Again, some of you are intuitively guided. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you could certainly be in love with the Scorpio. Um, I have a lot of Scorpio love in my life. And, you know, they're just beautiful, beautiful souls. Now, I know not all Scorpios. You know what I mean? I think I think it depends really on like how you were raised. You know, there's a lot of different factors that go into like why one Scorpio can be so kind and beautiful and giving and another can be a taker i think it's whether i'm living up to my let's say my life's purpose or the potential that i have um so anyways let's go ahead and get into your reading um i did bring out the romance angels in case the love comes up i think i have them reversed i think they're just mixed we'll leave them that way of course, we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. We will use the Gilded Trail to clarify or go deeper. And um, for your main spread, we're going to use the Psychic Trail. Really a deck I love for you, Scorpio. So we use the Psychic Trail. But let's go ahead and begin with Mother Mary. I'm going to bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. I don't want it too much. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with Mother Mary. Mother Mary. They're my beautiful Scorpios. And those are two guided. What messages do they need to hear today? Or, you know, when I say today, Here's what, here's my belief. I feel like a reading, especially because I do read through my guides. Um, and I feel like your guides will definitely use a reading to get signs to you. So, you know, I feel like a reading reaches you in divine timing, whenever that may be. But let's go ahead and begin. Well, that did not take long at all. Okay. And both are face up. We have devotion. As I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God, I am clear about what to do next. Devotion. And then we have family. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, and healing. So interesting, God was mentioned twice out of the two cards, right? Um, I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God, and I am clear about what to do next. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, and healing. Healing. Okay. Thank you, Mother Mary. I'll put those right over there for right now. Um, don't mind the... I had a big Band-Aid there over my hand. Um, I cut my hand when I was celebrating with the Steelers, but it's taken a while to go away. All right, so Psychic Trail. 
Again, special reading for Virgo. Tell me why I was called. What messages Scorpio has that maybe I haven't picked up on. Um, I don't know if I said this, but my daughter is a Scorpio. Her birthday is October 29th. Uh, Jenny Love Tarot, many of you know of her channel. But she does have a job outside the house now, so she's not able to be on her channel as often. Um, but this is one of the things that really called me to the reading because she's in that area of, like, working hard, but, you know, having a hard time paying all the bills type of thing, but yet continuing to work hard. And I feel like it's definitely going to pay off. Um, and I'd also, you know, if you want to give a shout out to her, that would be great. But it's not just for my daughters, for everyone. Okay. But I wanted to make sure I said that. My brother is Scorpio, November 6th. Whoa. All right. So we open up with, this is temperance. Um, in this deck, it's called patience, which is one of temperance's first message. You know, patience for something. It's about divine timing, though. You know, I love it when temperance shows up in a reading because it kind of lets you just take a breath. You can just trust in divine timing. For some of you, you could talk about, you know, the, the energy over with Mother Mary. And just know that divine timing is working in your life. But having patience for maybe something to come about. Um, it is the major arcana for Sagittarius also. And then we have the Four of Cups. So right there it tells you discontentment and boredom. Now, this doesn't have to be in all areas of your life. We talk about the emotional part of your life, something emotional, you know, that I'm just not really satisfied with. This person here has their back to the world. And um, it's interesting because normally in the Four of Cups, you see a cup being offered to this person. And it really is a cup of fulfillment. But this person has to use their spiritual discernment. That's what really what this energy is about. Can I use my spiritual discernment to trust whether I accept this cup or not? <clears throat> you know, to me, this is a good omen, even though this is not the greatest of energy, right? There's something I'm discontent about. Maybe, maybe a partner is what I'm looking for. Um, and again, talk about something emotional, but let's not forget in the four of cups, there is a cup coming in and normally you see it coming like if it looks like from the hand of God. And I love that it's sitting right next to temperance. It's interesting though, that this person's back is to temperance. Almost like, like, I don't know if I have the patience. Temperance is like, have patience, my child. Trust in divine timing. Know that there's a cup coming in. Now, that cup doesn't have to mean love, but it is something emotional. It's some type of fulfillment. See the two fours? And, you know, fours always remind me of being grounded. You know, it's important to be grounded. You know, and this person, again, has their back to the world. Maybe it would serve them to turn around and face the world. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't feel like there's dissatisfaction in every part of my life, just one area. But again, temperance, divine timing is working on that. Some of you might be like, well, when? Well, let's find out. And let's find out what that cup is. We have sacrifice, heart of Leo. And then we have, look at this, foundation and achievements. Nice.
Look at the fours. So three fours I'm seeing already. Four, four, four. Um, you know, I would look that up, matter of fact, because I feel like that is a, an angel message. So I'm going to take a second. I know not everybody loves this. Oh, my phone. Mm. Come on. You know, I have a cheap little phone. It drives me nuts. Okay. Angel number four, four, four. Let's just see what it says. Oh my gosh, it's taking forever. Hello. You know, patience. But why is it taking so long? Okay. In numerology, the number 444 is considered an angel number that can have many different meanings. Um, let's pull up this one. 444 can be a sign that your angels are with you, offering guidance and support. It can also be a reminder that you're on the right path and have a solid foundation to hold on to. Let's just read one more. Um, angel number 444 conveys a powerful message of love, support, and guidance from your angels. It serves as a reminder that you're on the right path and that your angels are by your side offering their unwavering support. So, 444. All right. I don't do that very often, but something made me do that. Sorry it took so long. But let's keep going. You know, I've been seeing a lot of synchronicities within numbers lately. And um, that's something that I've been teaching myself is numerology. We have intuition under temperance. It's almost like um, temperance is saying that instinctively you're going to know when it's time. You, maybe when this cup comes in, instinctively you're going to you're going to know that this is a good thing. Your intuition is your guide, you know, and temperance is pointing right down to your intuition. It's interesting because there's a door behind her and it does look like she, you know, like this door, the potential of opening up this new door. Beautiful. We have the sun. Double Leo. You know, I'm not surprised because um, as it relates to my daughter, my son is or was a Leo. Uh, many of you know he's crossed over, so I never know whether to say was or is, but it definitely represents Leo. It's their major arcana. But this, you know, what I love when the sun comes out in a reading, it feels to me like the promise of a new day. Um, you know, it's it's feeling light, playful. Everything is illuminated to you. So this person in the four of or four of cups who has their back to the world, it's like it's being illuminated to them. Also, whatever cup is coming in is also being illuminated. Or another way of saying that is it's coming in the light. So this is nothing you need to fear. Quite the opposite, probably something of a high vibrational energy. So your intuition and then the light, like pay attention to your intuition. We have the strength card. 
Here it's called power. And I really love this image because this is, this is half person, half tie or half lion. Why? Because it's the things that they've overcome. It's what you've overcome and what's really made you stronger. You know, you could have felt weak, but this is really moving into a, um, I feel like courageous type energy. Here's my son's birthday right there. Look at that. A12. And another four. Found, um, firm foundation. Interesting, it's coming under the marriage card. I don't even know if I said that. We have the marriage card that is mirroring patience. That's mirroring temperance, divine timing. You know, there could have been something or someone that you did need to sacrifice. You know, that just, let's just say, probably wasn't working out for you anyway. I can't believe all the fours you have. And I also love seeing my son's birthday right there. You know what I mean? To me, that it's just... And the reason why I say that is because I always feel like my son is in our readings. I feel like my son is, you know, one of my very strong guides now. And I always pay attention. Um, I feel him very strongly. But when I see his actual birthday in a reading, I don't know. It just makes my heart sing, especially because it's coming under my daughter, you know, Scorpio's reading. You guys are probably thinking, okay, Sandy, this sounds like it's too personal. You know, your daughter, your son. It's for all of you. Trust me. It's just to me, when I see my son's birthday, which I see quite often in a reading, to me, it's just signifying that because one of my very strong guides are here, so are yours. So are yours. All right. Let's see if anything else wants to come out. Okay. I was deciding whether I wanted to take eight cards, but I felt like, nope, we're going to keep going. We have the magician. Beautiful. Um, first of all, let me slide this all up. Give ourselves a little bit more room. Hello, Manifester. What do you want to manifest today? What do you want to bring to the world? You know, coming under divine timing and then your intuition. I feel like this is like having no doubt. Whatever it is I want to manifest, I feel like you, you now have the power to do that. You know, sacrifice to me means that you've gone through something Someone may have had to be sacrificed. Something may have been, you know, needs to be sacrificed. But, you know, when I say sacrifice, that sounds difficult. But I feel like it's really so what wants to find you can find you. And what you want to manifest comes in the light. That's a powerful line right there. All right, we have Stand Your Ground. This is the Seven of Wands. Coming under the light and under boredom and discontentment. Then we have the Three of Swords. So I feel like some of you, you're overcoming someone. Um, you know, heartache and loss, broken heart. But the ability to overcome that at least accept it. You know what I mean? Um, something clearly had probably happened to put you in this state. But I feel like because we have the strength card right above it, this is you overcoming that. So I don't feel like the power that the Three of Swords once held still holds. You know what I mean? Like, again, I feel like this is what you're overcoming. There may be someone who, in the past, or even currently, could be putting you in this state, you know, where, again, you feel like your heart is broken. But this feels old to me. When I say old, I mean, it could be not that long ago. Um, but I do feel like this is something that 
If you haven't overcome, you're on your way to overcoming. You know, and standing next to or sitting next to stand your ground. Well, you could have been dealing with someone who just, I don't know. I get this feeling like I want it my way. I want it my way. But Scorpio doesn't like people to tell them how things should be, right? Scorpio intuitively knows that. You know, you're a very intuitive sign. And when you know that and you really trust your intuition, then the things or the vibration that is no longer working, I feel like then you, you know, you face that and then you let it be, you let it go, you move on. Stand your ground, could certainly talk about, you know, I often feel in the Seven of Wands, this is like putting out a bunch of fires. I put out one fire, another fire starts. Put out that fire and another one. But I feel like you also learned a lot from it. Yes, stand your ground, but also knowing, you know, okay, is it worth it? You know, is it worth me standing my ground, especially with the Three of Swords next to it? What am I fighting for? Am I fighting for something that probably may not satisfy me in the long run anyway? You know what I mean? All right, let's try to get, I was just going to say, let's try to get one out. And one came out and look at this, the waiting game. So I feel like if anybody's had you waiting, you know, and that's kind of what it feels like here. Like someone may have had you waiting and um, I just don't see you waiting around too long. Interesting that waiting game is mirroring. Well, first of all, it's mirroring the marriage card. It's mirroring the magician, but it's also mirroring patience. Temperance, divine timing. The line that this waiting game is in, I don't know if it's if I could recommend or say that this is something you should continue waiting for. Now, maybe I uh, what I'm waiting for is a real relationship. You know what I mean? And if that's the case, then you want to look back and be like, okay, where is my energy at? Do I have my back to the world? When that cup comes in, am I willing to accept it? Again, I feel like the reading is is telling you that whatever this cup consists of, it's coming in the light. There's nothing you need to fear, especially with your intuition right beside the light. And again, divine timing. And then your ability to manifest. but. I don't want to manifest heartache back to me, right? I don't want to manifest this continuous of waiting. And I often feel this is anything to do with love. I don't know. I just get a little upset almost because, like, I hate to see you in a state of waiting for someone to decide whether they love you or not. I feel like you either love me or you don't love me. Right. You either want to be with me or you don't want to be with me. And maybe it's just the Virgo in me, but I feel like it's that simple. Like, do you want to be with me? Then be with me. If you don't want to be with me, I will, you know, it get hurt, but I will get over it. And that's exactly what I feel like you're doing here. I feel like you are getting over it. I don't feel like you're going to wait anymore. Um, though I do want to say in the same breath, temperance talking about divine timing, marrying the marriage card, it could talk about, you know, have I given my energy and time to someone who just plays games versus someone who will love me wholly and completely. We have the Six of Wands on the bottom of the deck. 
material, and spiritual prosperity. Hello. Material and spiritual prosperity. It's interesting because um, I think in the beginning of the reading, I was talking about how Jen was like working her butt off, but still like, you know, having a hard time paying those bills. Um, and Lord knows I've been there. Still kind of there. You know what I mean? So I feel like this is a really good omen. Like any hard work, you'll eventually see the harvest from that. Not only material prosperity, but also spiritual prosperity. And I love that because temperance is the first energy that opens up your reading. So divine timing. I feel like that's where the spirituality comes in. Your intuition next to the light. Like, to me, it feels like whatever energy is coming in next, it feels like it's going to be very clear. It feels like it's of the light. It's nothing I need to fear. I don't feel like I have to play any games. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, these fours to me, feel like you yourself have been firming up your own foundation. And to me, that means that you're raising your vibration. And just by the law of attraction alone, you know, the universe must meet you where you're at. So. But I feel like your intuition is very strong right now. Okay, let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And let's go ahead and go over the reading. Let's go deeper. Deeper if we dare. Oh, Destiny on the bottom of the deck right now. We'll see if it comes out. But I definitely wanted to show you that. Well, look at that. It didn't want to pick up with the rest. So it wanted to come out. All right. So we have the wheel. Coming right over temperance. That's beautiful. Divine timing. You know, it's like divine timing saying, I'll get this wheel spinning again. If you felt stuck. This feels like now things are going to start moving. But I feel like when you see the wheel, it means it's moving in your favor. But don't forget, we also have the magician here with your intuition. So the power you have in really getting this wheel to move. Um, I feel like whatever is opening up is destined. That's what the wheel to me means, destiny. You know, like things... Things and people that were really meant to be. Doesn't mean if someone broke my heart that they weren't meant to be. Maybe they were teaching me a lesson. Maybe what I learned is I myself have to raise my own vibration so that if I am interested in love, that it comes in a high vibration. So I like that a lot. Then we have the Queen of Pentacles. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be any of that, though. So let's talk about what this queen does. Um, first of all, I often call this queen my psychic detective. Um, this is someone who really can read between the lines. You know, I often feel like if I have a contract in front of me, this is the person I'd give it to because she's someone, she or he is someone who will you know, find those hidden clauses. So I feel like this, what this is symbolizing to you is there's nothing that anything or anyone is coming towards you. Um, if they're not coming in, in an upright way, you'll know that because again, her being the psychic detective. And I do feel like this is you, by the way, you know, unless of course, you feel it. You know, I always want you to trust your own intuition in a reading. So some of you, you certainly may be dealing with, um, you know, it's showing as a queen. 
but it doesn't have to mean it's female, right? Because we have both masculine and feminine energy within us. But let's just right now just say, let's just call you the psychic detective right now. I like that she's she's holding this big pentacle in her hand. To me, that also represents this material prosperity. We have the Emperor Cardiveris um, coming under over sacrifice. That's interesting. Could be a father figure. You know, the Emperor is normally someone we would look up to. This is someone who I would normally say has their shit together. You know what I mean? Like, there's the Emperor, I feel like, is the leader of the people. And the Emperor leads because the Emperor has had the experiences, has overcome a lot. This could also talk about business ownership, creating your own business, being the boss. You know, some of you could certainly talk about a raise. I don't know why I'm picking that up, but I am like a raise, a promotion. But maybe I had to work really, really hard to get to that, to get to that state. And then we have, okay, we got a couple here. We have the two of wands. Beautiful. So two of wands coming over the marriage card. Number one. That's a good thing. The two of wands is also mirroring the wheel. That's a good thing because temperance opens this reading with the word patience, right? Patience. But I feel like it means divine timing is now is now in play. It means that this will is moving. And the two of wands to me is about you taking a step forward into it. You know, whatever it may be. It could be a new relationship. Um new opportunities and the two of wands to me is not a fear-based energy it's more of a like a curiosity um what lies ahead so there's not fear wrapped in that it's just me saying you know what i'm willing to at least take a step forward to see what happens hello world so a new chapter Um, this is, you know, interesting because again, it brings me back to the, the six of wands, material and spiritual prosperity. Well, I have to feel in the world's energy. This is when we really are our most spiritual, you know, some of you, this cup that's coming in again, whether it be love or just something that helps your life to be easier. But you do have to, you have to be willing to walk into it. You have to be willing to say yes. And then the new chapter opens up. You know, and I feel like instinctively, you just know it's time. There's nothing to fear at all. Because, again, divine timing is controlling that will, which is your destiny. And your destiny is saying, it's time for this new chapter. And that may mean that, you know, some old energy may need to go. And sometimes we don't like that. But I feel like in this energy, in this reading, it feels like it would definitely serve me to let it go. The beautiful Knight of Pentacles. I'll tell you why I call the Knight of Pentacles beautiful. Because, you know, it's much like temperance. It's also about divine timing. Knight of Pentacles, um, I feel, is a guardian angel. Interesting because it's right next to my son's birthday. So, who knows? Um, Steve might be now my daughter's guardian angel. But... The Knight of Pentacles talks about bringing a pentacle into your life. And this pentacle is really, truly meant to enhance your life. 
to make it better, bigger. Um, but this night is a slow moving night, but it comes at the right time. You know, just, you know, sometimes I feel like just in the nick of time, boom, it shows up. It's when you're ready, really. That's what I feel. So I come at the right time. And I come, I feel like bearing gifts right over the sun, looking right at the world. You know, I feel like there is nothing to fear on this next chapter. It just literally looks like one chapter is ending. But I feel like, you know, um, I, I may tell myself I'm not ready. But I feel like on a soul level, you know that you're ready. Beautiful. The four swords over the strength card. Healing. With the three of swords right below it, that's that heartache and loss. This is healing that. This is healing your beautiful heart. It's healing your beautiful mind. And really, it's, you know, I feel like when this takes place, then you can take what felt like, I don't know, like, I want to say hell. And really understand that by overcoming that energy, you yourself are so much more courageous than you've ever been. Healing. Beautiful. We have the Seven of Wands again. Interesting. And then we have the tower. Now, don't freak out when you see a tower. Let me grab a drink real quick. Um, don't freak out when you see a tower because, you know, it does represent something's ending. It does represent disruption. And it can certainly talk about someone falling from grace. But I don't feel it's you. And I'll be honest, I feel this tower is more you giving the tower. You know, whether I'm like literally giving a tower to someone. And what I mean by that is like I'm literally saying, you know, you just don't have a place in my life anymore. I want more. I want better. Right? I want definitely if it's talking about partnerships, I definitely want someone who um is also spiritual. And you know, they don't have to use those terms. To me, spirituality just means that you know, I'm a giving soul. I understand that Part of my purpose here on life is to help others, you know, is to help raise other people up. And a lot of times I feel like how we do that is due to our past experiences. But I definitely feel like whoever has been, let's say, having you on the hook for a while, I feel like that's what you're doing. You're giving that energy the tower. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jeff. Don't you come back no more. Okay. Well, your cards are coming out quite easy today. Hello, Ace of Swords. Um, Ace of Swords. First of all, the Ace of Swords is my yes card. You know, I used to, there a long time ago, I don't, I should do this again. I used to do um, like yes or no, uh, you know, people could ask me questions, but it had to be like a yes or no answer. And it's way back when I started, I used to do it on Facebook um, until Facebook no longer allowed it. Now they allow it again, but it's weird. Um, they actually kicked me off and I was devastated. 
because that's where I started to really create my business. But then it kind of forced my hand, and that's when I joined YouTube. And my God, am I glad I did. So sometimes things that don't feel like they're working in our favor actually are. I do feel like this also speaks about your voice, your truth, your integrity. And if I'm, again, connected to anyone, then I want them to also be able to live in their truth, their integrity. Otherwise, again, hit the road, Jack. Hello, Nida Cups. So, let's go back the whole way to the beginning of the reading where the Four of Cups came out right next to Temperance, right next to Divine Timing. First of all, the Four of Swords is here, and that is healing. It's also giving you a sense of, you know, courage within yourself. And what is it healing? It's healing a broken heart. And then look what comes in. Unexpected cup of fulfillment. Again, unexpected. But it is fulfillment. You know, it's like the Knight of Pentacles and even Temperance was saying, first and foremost, you know, I feel like we got to stand our ground against those who kind of do leave us on the hook. You know, um, in in any way in our lives, you know what I mean? It's like if someone needs to make a decision, but they keep putting it off and, it, and it's affecting you in some way, then I feel like you're going to make that decision. You know what I mean? Like, and because I feel like it's you giving the tower. And again, it just means like I, I'm no longer interested in lower vibrational energy, lower vibrational people. You know, if I've done all this work to raise up my vibration, then I'll be damned if I want someone of a low vibration to come in. I don't want that. So the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. Literally, that cup within the Four of Cups is now coming in. And maybe part of divine timing was so that you could heal and I don't mean completely. You know, I feel like all of us have these broken little pieces. And that's okay. Um, especially if this is relating to, like, let's say a soulmate. And I don't know how it could not be with temperance. You know, if it's love, let's just say. Um, with temperance and the Knight of Pentacles here. Both divine energy. There's no way they would usher in, at this point, a lower vibrational energy. Let's follow that night. Two nights, by the way, connected. It's interesting because this night's coming this way. This night's coming this way. Knight of Pentacles, again, I come at the right time. I bring you in this pentacle, which really to me is like a seed. And maybe why the night moves so slowly is because with that seed, if I just ignore it, then it will dry up and die. You know what I mean? Then it won't produce any fruit. But if I nurture that seed, if I water that seed, then it's going to blossom. Then it's going to blossom. And that feels like the right time. That feels like divine timing. And that's why the night moves slowly. Just wants to make sure that you can take full advantage of what the universe wants to deliver. All right. So we have the five of wands over the waiting game. We have the ten of swords under the tower, but also over the magician. The ten of wands. Wow. Ten of swords and the ten of wands. The hangman. Well, we do have the waiting game. So, you know, the hangman is a little bit of a pause in the action. But I feel like the hangman 
is really seeking wisdom. Like, help give me wisdom on what action steps to take next. And I, I don't feel like there's any, you know, I feel like whenever you're ready, the universe is ready. I do feel like there may be some requirements. Again, I feel like that tower probably has to go to whoever has you waiting, especially with the five of wands coming over that. That talks about a lot of drama. That talks about a lot of ego. Um, you know, I often say in that energy, if I'm waiting for someone to like claim their part, like, look, you know, look what you've done. Look how you keep me waiting and this and that. Chances are they're not going to acknowledge that because, again, it's a lot of ego. So I'm even more happy to see you give that person a tower. And then look at this, the high priestess again. So let's look at this real quick because we have some, we do have some hard energy down here, but I feel like this is what is coming to a close. Ten of Swords with the Tower, to me, often represents like a repeat pattern. You know, it's like someone who keeps putting swords in my back, daggers in my back. Um, but to the point where I start to realize that there's just going to be another dagger. And then you move into the Ten of Wands. Well, first of all, it is a period of heavy responsibilities. Um, and maybe the Knight of Pentacles is like, you know, you're saving grace right at the right time. Right at the right time. Ten of Wands, I often feel that someone is subconsciously wishing for a tower anyway. You know, it just feels like it's too much. And again, it can be something that was a repeat pattern. A hangman, I feel like that's what the hangman's learning. That's what the hangman's understanding. So again, I'm seeking spiritual wisdom, but to use on this earthly plane. And then I love that the um, your intuition is right next to that. So instinctively knowing. <clears throat> knowing what? Well, when to close a door. When to no longer accept what is really feels unacceptable. All right. Um, I want to look at a couple of things. I love the Knight of Pentacles is looking right at the world again, coming over the sun. So, you know, the one thing when the sun comes out in a reading, anything done in the dark will come to the light. No doubt about that. So if anyone in your life, you know, that's already in your life, or let's say someone's coming towards you, again, you'll know very clearly, like, you know, anything, again, done in the dark will come to the light. So this knight looking right at the world, this, this pentacle that this knight wants to bring in, it feels even stronger now. Um, we have the five of pentacles. So five, change. This is, you know, this is temporarily difficult energy. It can talk about something that just didn't work out in your favor. At least that's what you think at the moment. But truth be told, and you know, these two tens down here, which are difficult tens. I feel like this is the type of energy where one day I will look back and I'm going to be kind of thankful for that tower. You know, the world means that you're ready for something new. You know, especially coming over your intuition. And then destiny above that. 
you know, sometimes we just give the wrong people too much of our time, too much of our energy. So, and I often feel also in the Five of Pentacles, the person's moving towards the Six of Pentacles, which to me really talks about like moving towards your soulmate tribe. It could be a soulmate, but I feel like it's like your soulmate tribe. You know, like here, I feel like we're all, we're all soulmate family. And I feel like that's why a reading can resonate with so many people because I feel like a lot of us are going through the same thing or have been there and we can help others to overcome. So difficult energy to start with. But it moves in, you know, and what am I learning through the Five of Pentacles? Empathy, compassion. But first and foremost, for yourself, remember it's a five. So it's change. I may have not asked for this change, but I know it's going to suit you. I know it's going to be good for you. I just feel it. I just feel it. All right. Let's look right at the Knight of Cups, who has the hangman. Oh. Hello, Ten of Cups. House of Love. Harmony. Laughter. Joy. Playfulness. Blended families. New families. You know, we do have it mirroring the Emperor. Could be the father figure. Again, could be your future, you know, the future father of your children. Um, but this is the house of love. And I'm looking right at that knight of cups. Uh, you know, what a great energy for the knight to bring out. Is it possible, especially when you look at these tens, that Ten of Swords, dagger after dagger after dagger in my back. Ten of Wands, too much. It's the responsibility is so heavy, it's breaking my back. And then the Five of Pentacles, well, there is that change. And, you know, sometimes the change is not easy. Sometimes, you know, cutting people out of our life or cutting situations out of our life that maybe we wanted to work, but just didn't. It's not easy. But in the same breath, this is saying that there is a new chapter ready to open for you. It is part of your destiny. It is part of divine timing. You know, and then the Knight of Cups. Well, Knight of Cups here and the Knight of Pentacles. What beautiful, beautiful energy that's coming over some difficult energy. One of the reasons why I did this reading, because I just knew some of you were going through some difficult energy, but what a great omen, the Knight of Cups bringing out the Ten of Cups. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it. And let's just think about this for a second. Let's think about how, you know, as you overcome and learn, your vibration lifts. As you cut out these tens down here, it's just naturally that your vibration lifts. And as your vibration lifts, because remember, this night is waiting for the perfect time. And it's so that you can really use this, this seed, let's call it, and create a beautiful life for yourself. It doesn't have to mean issue-free, because I feel like that's, you know... Everyone's got issues, even if I am in a happy, you know, loving home. Everyone's happy, but it doesn't still mean like there can't be some issues. But in the Ten of Cups, I feel like if it's relating to love, which I don't know how it couldn't be, um, you know, any issues, we work them out together. We work them out together. You know, material spiritual prosperity is telling me that your vibration is lifting. It's telling me that you are taking action steps to make your life better. But now it feels like you're starting to see the fruits of your labor. I just feel like there's one thing that may need to go. But it needs to go because 
It just doesn't feel like it's living up to the potential promise that you one time thought it had. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of you, that's exactly you, what you've been thinking about. It's a time just to move on. It's a time to put myself first again. You know, again, you've been working hard. You've been raising your vibration. You've been, you know, you're always kind to other people. Um, and, you know, it's like good karma is now finding you. I will take it. And we'll come back with the romance angels over that. But I want to look at the Knight of Cups. I'm sorry. The Knight of Pentacles. Again, guardian angel energy coming over the sun. Light. Looking right back at your intuition, but also the world. The next chapter. So whatever this seed, whatever this knight is, well, I know what he's carrying. So this seed is part of what's next, not what was. And then you being willing to just take a step forward. All right, but let's look at that. So we're looking at the Knight of Cups over the Sun, or the Knight of Pentacles over the Sun, who's looking at the world. It's coming over your intuition. Look at this, the magician again. And then the moon. The moon. Um, what's the last full moon we had? I think it was Aries. There's Aries right there. That could definitely signify something. You know, it's maybe maybe it is talking about the Aries full moon and um now it's time, like now it's like giving us a period of time. So it feels like now. It feels like now. So the moon, card of Pisces, ruler of cancer, can talk about uncertainties. I may not know exactly where this next chapter is going to take me, right? But maybe I'm not meant to know. Maybe it's really about the journey. Again, let's go back to that too. That's coming over the marriage card. Well, we have the Ten of Cups. But maybe I'm meant to really enjoy this journey. So that can certainly, you know, uncertainties can scare us a little. But with the magician right there, I feel like this is something you manifested. And the moon can also talk about very dreamy type energy. Some of you, you have some dreams coming true. Okay, well, let's stay with that, but let's add in the wheel and temperance. You just might find that this next chapter, which could be, let's see if it's talking about love. I feel like it's talking about a few different things, but if it's talking about love, I feel like this is love that's going to last a lifetime, probably for the rest of your life. Um... I feel like whatever in, you know, it can also talk about money. You know, your money's increasing, um, which is a good thing. You, you know, you're starting to see the fruits of your labor. You know how I was saying, like, Jen was having a hard time paying her bills. Maybe, you know, the energy is changing where something happens and she's able to pay her bills easier. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, again, that Knight of Pentacles comes at just the right time. All right. Okay. They're all reversed. Let's turn them around. We have the Hermit. Carter Virgo. Um, this is all about your spirituality. You know, I often feel the Hermit has gone through the dark night of the soul. And I feel like really it is those difficult lessons that teach us more than anything. This hermit, though, has emerged from that cave. And when I say cave, sometimes you'll see the hermit like in this dark cave. And that's when I'm really seeking the light. I'm seeking spiritual answers, spiritual clarity. But well, the hermit's found it. Because now the hermit's sharing this beacon of light with others. 
and there's a snake right there. So this lantern is illuminating this snake. To me, it's it's a sign of comfort. Like I don't have to worry that like if there's any snakes in the grass, I'll see them. It's just like the sun. Anything done in the dark will come to the light. But this is a spiritual light. It's like you have turned on your spiritual light. It's go time. It's go time. Ace of Wands, inspired action. Guidance. It's your intuition being lit up. It's showing you the way. You know, I feel like in the Ace of Wands, we do, we do need to reach out and grab this Ace. We do need to say yes. But because we have the Two of Wands, I feel like you are saying yes. And, you know, I love that it's following the Hermit. So I feel like dark days are over. I'm not going to promise like there won't be any dark days. But I feel like, you know, the majority of the darkness, you're now moving into the light and out of the dark. And this is inspiration. But this is guided inspiration. You know, it's it's letting you know that your whole spiritual team is not only beside you, and we know that from what we read, but also guiding you. And then, hello, victory again. Now, what I love about this image is you can clearly see that other people are really looking up to this person. Um, and it is because of action steps that this person has taken. And others are admiring that or even asking, how'd you do it? And I feel like you you easily want to help. You know what I mean? So you easily will share that with others. But this is the energy of people looking up to you, not looking down. I have a feeling someone was looking down. But bye-bye to you. And hello to what's new. So again, victory and success. All sits upon this wheel. All rest on divine timing. But again, you're being inspired when to take these action steps. And I would definitely follow them because look where they're leading, you know, and, and it feels like not only do we have the potential of love here, but I feel like, again, money, um, promotions, you know, where, again, other people now look to you. You know, it's like if I started a new job and I'm training and I don't know quite what I'm doing, but then as I learn, now I'm helping others to, you know, who are new to learn what I had to learn. So that's why it feels like, like for some of you, a promotion. But also, I feel like, you know, be proud of the things that you have learned. Because others, again, in this energy, are really are looking up to you. And who's ever not looking up to you? You know, if anybody's complaining to you in that type of energy, well, that's what the tower is for. That's what the tower is for. Okay, um... It's funny, uh, every time I say I don't want to make a reading too, too long, they become long. But that's my curiosity. So I do want to look at this emperor real quick. Whoa. Okay, that's, that's half my deck. That was human error. Some of you may have ma had to make some real sacrifices to get to a certain point in your life. But again, it's probably was well worth it or it will be well worth it. Okay, we got quite a bit, but we're going to take them. We have the Page of Swords. We have the Sun again. 
Beautiful. We have the Two of Swords. We have the King of Cups, your counterpart. And then we have the beautiful Empress. So interesting, we're looking at the Emperor. And we also now have the Empress. And you guys know, those of you who've been with me, know that if this is love, well, the Emperor and the Empress is what I really look for. Because they're like-minded energy. They do things differently. But they have the same goals in mind. It's like saying, you know, we have the same morals. But it doesn't mean we live our lives exactly the same. I love that the Emperor and the Empress are sharing the sun. Now, the two, pen or the two swords came out. And that does talk about wearing a blindfold. Could simply mean something I don't want to face. But it definitely serves me to face it because remember, you have the Two of Wands, which is not a fear based energy. Um, some of you with the Page of Swords there, it could be communication. You know, and the King of Cups with the Emperor and the Empress would be the perfect energy to come out with that, especially with the Ten of Cups right there. Because to me, the King of Cups in the upright is someone who loves love. Someone who easily gives love, speaks of love. Like, you know, like if I love you, I tell you I love you. I show you that I love you. You know, I want to have you by my side. I want that special person. This person, this king is holding this big cup. And it makes sense, you know, our human nature. Of course, we're going to be a little fearful. It's only the two. It's not the eight. But the sun is right beside that. So whatever blindfold I have on, the sun's going to, you know, uh, you're going to, this. it's like, it, does, it won't serve you because the sun's going to see right through that anyways. Some of you just might be surprised at the energy that's coming towards you. It may be stronger than you've ever felt before. And yes, that can be a little scary, but it's all working in your favor. It's all for you. We now have the mother and the father figure. And I love that the Empress is actually touching the Knight of Cups. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead. All right, I just wanted to look at the bottom of this deck. I didn't really want to, but it just, something made me. Seven of Cups, making a decision. Could be making a decision during chaotic times. And that could be what the Two Swords is talking about. You know, uh, someone may reach out in a period of, you know, in a, like during a day where things don't feel like they're going that well. But then I do feel like this is life changing. And I feel like that's exactly what it's meant to do. So what are you doing in the seven of cups? You're choosing a cup. What's happening in the four of cups? There's a cup being offered. You know, then we see the knight of cups. Who is the one who's ushering in that cup? And what does that knight produce? The ten of cups. So, and then the two of wands coming over the marriage card. So I feel like this is saying, um, first of all, I mean, I don't want to leave out your material prosperity because I feel like that's an important component here. You know, it's almost like receiving the money that I need for something right at the nick of time. Right when I needed it. But I also do feel like this is talking about love. And I love that the emperor and the empress are sharing the sun. And that it's in the line with the knight of cups, who then produces the ten of cups. So I feel like this is the perfect time to bring in the romance angels. Let's give them a couple shuffles. And what I'm going to look at, actually, let me pick up the majority of this so that it's clear. Let's remember that we saw the Empress with the Emperor. Just 
pick up all the extra ones. Give ourselves a little bit more room. I think that was extra. I think Magician was extra. All right, so now we can see the Knight of Cups and the Ten of Cups together. Oh, I want to give them a cut. I mean, what a divine birthday present. Codependency, though it did show in reverse. And that could be a little bit of what the waiting game is. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Hmm. Now, I feel like you'll know if that's for you or not, but it did show in reverse. So maybe, you know, I really, I'm not feeling, or let me say it this way. Um, this codependency could be on another. And I feel like that's what you're ending. Again, you're being, I feel like you're being very clear. Because I don't feel like if, again, someone's had you waiting, and I just don't feel that you're going to continue waiting any longer. You know, and that's what the world's signifying. All right, what, a, oh, past life relationship. That makes sense with the emperor and the empress. You have known each other before. Well, hello, past life. So you know that you're soul connected. There's no way around that. You're soul connected. So this Knight of Cups is bringing you someone. Or I'm saying bringing you. But let's just say that someone from a past life is now coming into your life. And look how romantic that image is. Hello. See if anything else wants to come out. Wow. Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Beautiful. We're here. It feels like there wasn't commitment. Now you're moving potentially. And I say potentially because you have free will. You know, let's not forget, we saw the two of swords. Though I do feel like you, I feel like you'll overcome that. Um, but I do feel like, you know, it has to be up to you whether you're going to continue. I don't know if there's someone who's been putting daggers in your back. No, I just don't feel like you're going to continue. I just don't. Especially with engagement. But I feel like really what it says is what your whole reading is talking about. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So in the waiting game, that's exactly what it feels like. Someone afraid to make any commitment. But now we have a past life. A past life love. And the evolution of this love. Again, let's not forget, we have the Ten of Cups. Starting at the two. But that's because I feel like we want to go through this journey. The journey is probably going to be very romantic. And why miss that? Right? It can move quickly. Though I don't really have energy of anything, you know, moving quicker than it should. But I feel like, yes, enjoy each and every moment. And maybe it is going to end up in an engagement, which then will turn around and end up in a marriage. But I feel like engagement first, because it is about the journey. All right, let's just do one more. See if anything else wants to come out. And then I think I'm going to do another Mother Mary over this reading. Look at this honeymoon. Honeymoon. 
Enjoy the bliss of the holiday time together. Wow, the holidays are right around the corner. I feel like this is giving us a time period. Interesting that we go from engagement to honeymoon. We left out marriage. But honestly, I feel like um, this is giving us a time period and really telling you what it's going to feel like. Some of you, you know, I'm noticing this person um, crossing the waters on what looks like a gondola. You know, I know I have a couple people from Italy. I don't know why it makes me think of Italy, but it does. Um, but this could mean that this person may not be like that local. Though, I feel like that's probably just for a few and then we have forgiving and learning. I feel like that's the ticket to the game. As you release and heal what you are, the past, you experience more love in your present moment. Scorpio, everything's calling you to the present. Divine is calling you to the present. The wheel is calling you to the present. The world is the next chapter right over your intuition. That night of Pentacles, I'm coming at the right time. And, you know, I have a feeling this night of Pentacles is more about your financial world. Though I'm not going to leave out because I kind of feel like this night brought out the night of cups. So it feels like two things. And again, material and spiritual prosperity but then also love. You know, it is important that we learn to forgive um, because when we forgive, and, it, and when I say forgive, I don't mean pick up the phone. Like, I mean, that's up to you. But I don't mean that you have to pick up the phone and literally say those words to someone, I forgive you. You just want to forgive within your heart. Sometimes it's just forgiving ourselves, like forgiving. Like, I need to forgive myself for sitting here and waiting and waiting for someone, you know, or waiting for something to change when really the, I've had the power all along. So the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment, brings out the Ten of Cups. That is the house of love. That's mirroring the Emperor and the Empress together, and the Four of Swords in between the two of them. You know, I feel like whatever little broken pieces I have left, we're going to help heal each other. Again, very like-minded, but you go about things a little differently. Neither is right, or I shouldn't say that, neither is wrong, is what I meant to say. You won't help but real, you know, you won't help but feel whoever this is, that they are potentially your soulmate. I'm saying potentially. I know that they are. But I feel like what I'm trying to say is I don't feel like it's going to take you long. Hmm. Just wanted to look at the bottom of the deck and we have trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. The situation is calling for you to have faith. And I want to do one more Mother Mary or whatever wants to come out over the reading now. Give it one more shuffle. I don't even know why I'm shuffling them. But I do want to give them a cut to introduce them into this into the reading now that we have everything out on the table. Hope. Hope. I trust that God has a wonder has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. Well yes God does. We see it everywhere on the table. I trust that God has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans 
in store for me. Hope. It's keeping hope alive. Keeping hope alive. You know, it reminds me of the star card. It's like wishes coming true. And, you know, sometimes when I'm in a negative place, it's hard to keep that faith. It's hard to believe that things can't change or things will change. But listen, part of this is you making changes. You no longer accepting lower vibrational energy. And I hate to keep saying it that way, but that's kind of how I feel it. Because I feel like you yourself have evolved so much. And when you evolve, naturally, those with those people or situations that carry a lower vibrational energy naturally want to fade out of our life. It's our human nature that keeps pulling them back in. So I feel like you're not pulling it back in anymore. You have faith that, you know, what's meant to find you will find you. And don't forget that we got that Ace of Wands also, which is inspired action. And your intuition is here twice. Even some of the mirroring energy, you know, like the Emperor and the Empress. Some of you may meet someone in your workplace. Could be a boss. You could be the boss. But that's just one potential. Of many. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it there. Quite beautiful. Look at that. Something made me pull up this card. And there's our soulmate. There is our soulmate. Huh. Yes. This is your soulmate. This past life. Relationship. You have known each other before. Remember how I said you were soulmates? I knew it. But now you know it. Yes. This is your soulmate. Look up to below that. Holy crap. True love. This is a romance of a lifetime. That's why it feels like it's moving. You know. Um, pretty quickly because, again, here comes this night. This night's bringing a couple fulfillment. It's from a soulmate. It is true love. It moves into engagement. And, and the engagement is telling you that your love life is ascending to a higher level. And then you have honeymoon, which is asking you to enjoy this. Well, it says holiday time together. So I feel like that's giving us a time period and then forgiving and learning. I feel like that's a necessity. And what that does is just helps. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people in my life, in my early life, I should say, um, who did not treat me well. You know, um, and I had to learn to forgive. And I did forgive. I forgave completely. And I'll tell you what happened after I did that. I no longer carried around that heaviness. It's like I freed myself. So that's what I feel like the power of forgiving is. It's so you can live a better life without dragging the past forward. Trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. True love. This is a love. This is a romance of a lifetime. Mother Mary, keep the hope. I trust that God has wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. That's what the will is. That is your destiny. This is about divine timing. This Knight of Pentacles, a guardian angel. I come at just the right time. You know, and I feel like the right time is really when our vibration, again, is ready to accept that pentacle and nurture that pentacle. 
And then this knight brings out another knight, the knight of cups. And that knight of cups brings out the ten of cups. I don't, I, I know I'm like rehashing the reading, um, but it's beautiful. I'm so glad I did this. So I just want to say happy birthday to those celebrating a birthday. I feel like you have quite a few birthday gifts coming your way. Spiritual gifts. And they're coming your way. I feel like the main thing is, will you be ready? Will you accept them? Because remember, it starts within that four of cups energy where I may not be so happy. So use that power of the tower. And then be just be willing to take a step forward and I feel like the rest will just kind of show itself and instinctively I just feel like you'll know you'll know I definitely feel like you're going to know that this person's a soulmate you're going to feel it and again we may not say that to each other I feel like there will be a day we will say that to each other but this is about enjoying the journey, the romance of it. So things are looking up, my beautiful Vir um, Virgos, my beautiful Scorpios. Things are looking up. A new chapter is opening. It's just part of your destiny. It, you know, it's funny because we have sacrifice and then we have the tower. I feel like that's what I'm sacrificing. But I feel like it's whoever or whatever I've been waiting on and waiting on and waiting on. To me, that's a clue that if I have to keep waiting, then maybe it's not really meant for me anyway. Wow. I loved it. I'm so happy I did the reading. Um, I almost didn't do the reading because I didn't want you guys to think I'm only doing it for my daughter. Um, it's really for everyone. She is, you know, she's part of the equation. Um, but this makes me so happy. Not just for her, but for all of you. So, happy birthday to those celebrating a birthday. Wow. This, you know, and the wheel with your birthday makes perfect sense. It is the next chapter. And it looks good. All right. I love you guys. I thank you. By the way, I have a promotional video coming out. Um, I won't go into detail, but from Otter Spirit Company that I love. Actually, I have the healing beads on. But this is um, pearls and sterling silver bracelet that are connected together. So I have that coming out. I'll show you. And there's a big discount on that. Okay, guys. I'm going to let that be. I love you. I love you so much. But thank you, guys. Um, and, you know, definitely drop a line and tell my daughter happy birthday, if you would, if you don't mind. Um, you know, she's torn because she hasn't been working on her channel very much. But she doesn't have a lot of time. And uh, she's been working her butt off. So, you know, my prayer for her is that she, that this, this Knight of Pentacles is bringing Pentacles her way. Um, but also love. But that is my wish for all of you. I love you guys. I'm going to stop talking now. I love you. I thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Bye-bye, guys.